Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Psalms 51, verses 1 through 2. Good morning, welcome back to the broadcast. It's uh, Wednesday, May 9th, 2018. And today we are continuing our study in the Gospel of Matthew. And uh, last w- last week we finished up with chapter 24, which is where uh, Jesus was answering some questions and about uh, the last days and the end of the age and His coming and all of that. And He kind of ends the conversation um, by reminding them yet again, or warning yet again, The importance of being ready, the importance of watching, and uh, how there's going to be some when he comes back. You know, they thought he delayed in his coming, so they went back to living, you know, however they wanted. And they ended up uh, having their portions with the hypocrites and those uh, with the gnashing of teeth, weeping and gnashing of teeth. And, you know, I talk about this a lot the importance of are you ready? Are you ready? You know, are you walking the walk, or are you just talking the talk? And uh, I often get comments sent to me complaining that I dare declare that a man's work for the Lord is not only important but necessary. Was it not James who said faith without works is dead, even the devils believe and tremble? And while works certainly do not save us, You know, only faith in Messiah can do that. Um, You know, only the blood of Messiah can cover our sins. Our work for the Lord, our desire for His Word, and for His kingdom, and for His law, is the evidence that we indeed are in the faith. Many will stand before the Lord with nothing to show. They did nothing for the kingdom. They led not a single soul to Christ. They did absolutely nothing with the talents that were given. There's no oil in their lamps. They did not think ahead or dare to consider the fact that the Master expects anything of them. They will sadly hear the words, I never knew you, and be cast into outer darkness. Your actions, your works do in fact matter because they demonstrate what you truly believe. And today we're going to be reading the parable of the ten virgins, which deals with this idea of being prepared, being ready, and the parable of the talents, which is the one that I really want to focus in on. Because, um, well, first of all, I've done a ton of of, of podcasts on the ten virgins. Matter of fact, um, I did the Remnant in the Wilderness series, which to date is the most popular series that I've ever created. And I'm going to start rebroadcasting those episodes uh, because I want to potentially add to them and um, uh, do some more work with that series and with that thought process. Uh, So you might start seeing those pop up in uh, the the podcast feed for those of you who are subscribed to the podcast uh, in the near future. Um, Because I just think it's important and... um, This is something that's kind of been on my heart lately. But, you know, all all I'm really doing is pointing out what the Word of God has to say. And people people struggle with it because it doesn't line up with their doctrine. You know, people have these certain thoughts and expectations and theories and doctrines. And then when the scriptures come along and say, you know, uh, you know, when Jesus says, not everybody who says Lord is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You know, but those who do the will of my Father, get away from me, you worker of lawlessness. I never knew you. You know, people struggle with this. Or when, you know, we've got this parable of the ten virgins, which are, you know, seem to be ten 
I, I look at this as though the virgins themselves, all ten of them, are at least professing Christians. But only half of them are actually entering in. And uh, so, you know, we have to take the scriptures for what the scriptures say. You know, we don't make the scriptures fit our doctrine. Our doctrine, you know, we don't interpret the scriptures through our doctrine. We should let the scriptures interpret our doctrine. Uh, but that's not what happens most of the time. So anyway, let's just uh, dig right into this. We're looking at Matthew chapter 25. And like I said, where it's the it's the same conversation continued, you know. Uh, he went through and he ripped the Pharisees and told them the kingdom was going to be taken from them and all these warnings. And then he tells the disciples that, you know, the temple's going to be torn down. The stone's not going to be left upon another. This is what it's going to be like when I return. And then he's giving these parables about the importance of being ready. So let's dig right in. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And of course, the bridegroom being Christ, the virgins being professing Christians. Verse 2, And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oils in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so lest there not be enough for us and for you, but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went away to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him into the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and he said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. And then here's the warning, verse 13, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now, like I said, I've done several talks about this. The thing that sticks out to my mind this morning is the door. The door was shut. You know, Jesus says in the end, it'll be like the days of Noah. People were eating and drinking and getting married. Life was as normal up until the day that Noah went into the ark. And you remember from the story of the ark, the Lord shut that door, right? And it was over. The opportunity for repentance was over. Noah had preached for a hundred years. Now Noah and his family were the only ones that were going to be spared. And sudden destruction came upon the rest. Here we have a situation where we have, you know, ten virgins, ten maidens. Five of them were foolish. Five of them were wise. If you take those numbers literally... And I'm not saying you should, but I wonder. Then that means half, right? Half of them were foolish, not prepared, were not thinking ahead, were not ready for the Lord. Half of them were wise. Half of them did think ahead. Half of them were prepared so that when the bridegroom came, they were ready to go out. They were filled with the Spirit. They were ready and that's what Jesus is warning about. And so the wise enter in. And while the foolish are trying to scramble to get themselves ready, it's already too late. The door was shut. And when they came to the door, and they were knocking on the door, Adonai, Adonai, Lord, Lord, open up to us. He said, uh, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. In other words, we didn't have an intimate relationship. That's what that word know there means. Just like when he says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity. We didn't have an intimate relationship. And then he says, watch, therefore, that's the warning, watch, be ready. For you know neither the day or the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. 
He stresses this over and over over the last few chapters that we've been reading. Over and over, be ready, be watching, be prepared. You don't know when I'm coming. I'm coming at a time that you think not. So you better be ready. If the good man of the house had known when the thief was coming, you know, the thief wouldn't have been able to break in, right? Let's move forward. He's still talking about the kingdom of heaven. How do we know? Because he says that. For, verse 14, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto him his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and another two, and another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. So here we have the master. He hands out talents to his servants based on you know their abilities. Here's the reality, folks, and... I get, you know, we all get upset about it. Some people have five talents. You know, some of us have one. This is what the Lord has given us, whatever yours is. And it's our job to do the best that we can with that. It's not our job to to look at our brother in Christ or our sister in Christ and say, it's not fair. Look at all that they've been given. It's your responsibility to do the best that you can do with what you've been given. Moving forward, verse 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. So now the Lord has come back. And now it's time to reckon with his servants. Okay, what have you done? Verse 20, And so so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And the Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. My life's mission right there. And sometimes I get sidetracked and and distracted by the things of this world, and I forget what my life mission is. But my goal, my ultimate goal, my ult- the ultimate thing I want at the end of my life is to hear these words, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. My worst nightmare would be hearing, Depart from me, I never knew you. Verse 22. He also received two talents, came and said, Lord, thou deliverest us unto me two talents behold I have gained two other talents besides them his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things I will make thee ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of the lord so the first two servants they they went and they did something God gave them talents and they went and they multiplied that they worked for the lord they did something for the kingdom of God they weren't lazy and slothful and, and you know, they didn't take for granted what the Lord had given them. But here's servant number three. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and I went and I hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there has, that is thine. Hidden in the earth, right? In other words, you know, I wonder how many people, God's given them ability, given them some form of a talent that they could use to to further the kingdom of God, but they just sit inside all day, watch TV all day, watch the news all day, do nothing for the kingdom of God. No interest in doing anything for the kingdom of God. They're squandering what God has given them. Verse 26. 
His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. In other words, he's saying you could have at the very least did the minimum, bare minimum. You know, you could have put it put it in the bank and at least gained some interest on it. You didn't even do the bare minimum. You did nothing. Verse 28. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which has ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given. And he shall have an abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, where there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Doesn't that sound pretty serious? He's saying, you know what? Take the little bit that this person has, because he refused to do anything with it, and give it to the one who is willing to work for the kingdom of God. And take this unprofitable servant and cast him into outer darkness where there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That sounds serious, doesn't it? You know, I think the biggest problem, people have no fear of the Lord. I mean, isn't that the beginning of wisdom according to the scriptures? The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. People have no fear of the Lord. The attitude is, I said a sinner's prayer. I show up to church occasionally. And that's the end of their Christianity. No fear of the Lord. I was reading Charles Spurgeon's commentary. He says this about uh, this, uh, according to verse 19. He says, After a long time, the Lord of those servants came to reckon with them. And Charles Spurgeon says this. He says, Always remember the reclining. We have heard of one who went into a house of entertainment and fed most luxuriously. But when the landlord brought him the bill, he said, Oh, I never thought of that. And there are many who spend their whole lives without without ever thinking of the reckoning. Yet it must come. And for every hour, for every opportunity, for every ability, for every sin, and for every omission of duty, they must give an account. The Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. I just thought that was a brilliant statement. A brilliant way to look at it. He says this about the, uh, about the servant who, who did nothing with the talent. He says, I was afraid and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. See, friends, how fear may often be the mother of presumption. Confidence in God begets holy fear, but unholy fear begets a doubt of God and leads us to a desperate rebellion of unbelief. God, save us from such fear. Let's move on and finish the chapter here. We've got about 15 more verses. While the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. This is the whole context of everything that we've been that he's talking about. He's saying, you know, there's going to be five foolish versions, five wise. There's going to be Um, servants who do something with what they've been given and some who do nothing. And then they're all going to stand before me when I return. Everybody from all the nations. And I'm going to start dividing them, the sheep from the goats. And before him shall be gathered all the nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. 
I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee, and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When, when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when we saw thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. You know, I think about that every time I take 30 seconds to hand a $5 bill to some guy on the street with a sign. I don't do it to every single person I see. But every time I do, I think to myself, Jesus says, whatever I've done unto this person here, this person who might be hungry, without a roof, without clothes, I do unto Jesus himself. So when I see a sign that says, need a hot meal, and I buy him some food, or I give him a $5 bill, that's what I'm thinking. Listen to this. Verse 41. Then shall they say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for, the, prepared for the devil and his angels. For was, for I was a hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a, a hungered, or a or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee. Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. That is the end of chapter 25. You know, people can get upset with me if they want, but I'll, I'm never going to, you know, unless unless the Lord tells me I'm wrong. But I'm just reading the scriptures here. Your actions matter. Your actions, your works, demonstrate what you truly believe in your heart. That is the broadcast for this morning. May you be one of the wise maidens, one of the wise virgins with a lamp full of oil, ready to cut the wick, trim, trim it up, ready to go out and meet the bridegroom. We just might be the generation that goes out to meet him. And I don't know about you, but I want to go into the marriage supper. I don't want that nightmare of being on the other side of that door saying, Adonai, Adonai, open up to us. And hearing, I never knew you. I don't want to let this world become so important to me that I squander the talents that the Lord has given me and have nothing to show when he comes, when he shows up, right? Right? Like Charles Spurgeon was saying. When he comes to reckoneth with me. I want to be able to say, look what I hear, Father. You gave me one talent and, and I I did something with it. I, I doubled it. Here, have it back. And I want to hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over much and now you're going to rule over many things. When we all stand before the Son of Man, when He comes in His glory, and He's surrounded by His holy angels, and He's sitting upon His throne, and all the nations are gathered, I want to be on the right-hand side with the sheep. And here come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Why? Because you did something when I was hungry, you gave me food. And when I was thirsty, you gave me some drink. When I was sick, you've come and visited me. You put clothes on my back. All these things that you did unto them who were in need, you've done unto me. 
well done. That's what I want to hear, folks. And may that be the same for you. That is the podcast for this morning. Please be praying for this podcast. Uh, just that it would go forth and pierce many hearts and that many people would be caused to fall on their knees and repent before the Lord. You know, that's that's my goal. I just want to share the good news. There's a famine in the land of the Word of God, and I'm just trying to fill that void the only way that I know how. You know, I've always been interested in podcasting, and I gave up my news show that I was trying to turn into, you know, something big, (laughs) and started preaching the gospel instead. And I'm very happy with that decision. And there's times when I think, man, I need to start this side project or this side project or that side project because I can fund my family and myself and maybe I could even quit my full-time job if I were doing some of these other things. But I rarely ever take any steps towards those other things because I'm like, man, I only have so much time and I can't take it away from preaching the gospel. And I'm not telling you all this to praise myself. I'm just telling you this because... You know, when when you start making a habit of reading God's Word and praying and, and working for the Lord, it, be, it takes precedence over everything else. Suddenly, everything else isn't so important. You know, the most important thing we can do is share the good news. Be a light on the hilltop. You know, it's easy to be a light right now, folks. You know why? Because it's so dark. It's so dark out there that even if you have a little bit of light, you'll light the whole city. It's easy to be salty when there's no salt to be found. Figure out what it is uh, that the Lord is giving you. Whatever the talent is, find a way to use it to bring glory to His name and, and to bring others into the kingdom. Peace and grace be with all of you, and until next time, God bless.